go let's proceed um, with the second part of market structure the concept of revenue okay so as you can see here uh, bila kita learn about market structure kita ada concept of revenue so bila i ask student what about revenue most students said it is uh, untung the profit uh, the thing is selalu uh, yang student salah faham lah uh, revenue and profit is two different things eh revenue is hasil profit adalah untung ok apa beza hasil dengan untung revenue ni kalau bahasa Melayu dia uh, untung kasar uh, profit adalah untung bersih so you must find revenue first before you can find profit to find profit after you have find your revenue you must minus with cost uh, hasil tolak cost then you can know how much profit you gain Okay, so ada tiga konsep dalam revenue which is total revenue, average revenue dan juga marginal revenue. This is so familiar, right? Like we learned before in the production and cost, ada tiga konsep yang utama for production. We have total product, average product, marginal product. For cost, the core, yang paling utama sekali for cost kita ada total cost, average cost, sorry, and last kali marginal cost. Of course, untuk cost ni, kita ada banyak lagi, which is total fixed cost, total variable cost. Untuk average cost ni, ada kawan dia lagi average fixed cost, average variable cost. Uh, that one is uh, overall cost untuk short run, ada tujuh semua sekali. Okay, the thing is, yang paling utama is total cost, average cost, marginal cost. Same goes with revenue three con important uh, concept there total revenue average revenue marginal revenue so i already told you total means the overall revenue hasil penjualan kita berapa okey bukan profit eh hasil jualan kita untung kasar kita so for example i told you i sell goreng pisang a piece of my goreng pisang the price is 20 cent 20 cent so i managed to sell 10 pieces 10 10 keping goreng pisang harga jual saya 20 sen so how much is my total revenue how can i calculate berapa banyak hasil jualan saya it's basically as simple as i times the price of my product times with the quantity that i sold so here, basically, the formula for total revenue is actually total revenue is equals to price times quantity. The price of the product times the quantity sold. Uh, 20 sen darab 10. Okay, so I got 2 ringgit. Alright. So this is revenue. So what is this? So no worries, kita tengok dulu. Then you can understand how come I got this. I already told you this is the formula. Ah. Then here, average revenue. What does it mean by average? Average means purata. Same goes here. Average cost, purata untuk cost. Average product, purata untuk product. So untuk cari purata is basically total, total. Total. Uh, so, total kena bahagi something. So, revenue is the hasil jual barang. So, you ambil lah total revenue divided by quantity. Sebab sekarang ni you nak tahu average revenue. Purata hasil untuk setiap barang yang you jual. Very simple, right? So, mostly student confused kat bawah ni. Because they don't know nak bagi Q ke nak bagi L. Sebab kalau layer production, production, we produce something using labor. So, we must divide it by labor. Because average product means that the production, the the the, the average purata penghasilan setiap labor. Setiap uh, apa pekerja yang kita hire. Sebab itulah, kita ambil total product jumlah penghasilan 
bahagi dengan labor. Okay? So, kita bukan, uh, kita nak tengok penghasilan daripada labor. Tapi untuk kos, kos menghasilkan barang. Sebab tu kita tak bagi bagikan labor. Kalau kita bagi bagikan labor, kos menghasilkan orang. Orang kan labor tu orang. Uh, same goes with revenue. Revenue menghasilkan barang. Sebab tu kita bagi dengan Q. Sebab tu I wrote it here. Must divide with quantity. For cost also quantity. And only for labor. Sorry. Only for production. Yang kita divided by labor. Okay. Are you okay with that? Alright. So to find average is basically total. Total something. So kalau kita nak cari average cost. Total cost. Kalau nak cari average revenue. Total revenue. Total revenue divided by quantity. Here is kalau nak cari average cost, total cost divided by quantity. Then we got the average purata. So, manipulating this formula, that's why we got this. Kan? So, bila kita tinggal TC kat sini, kita nak cari nilai TC, kat bawah ni bahagi kan? Q is bahagi. So, bila kita bawa ke tepi, dia akan jadi times darab. AC darab Q adalah formula untuk mencari TC. So, that's why you got this formula. And I already told you, when we learn about cos, ada satu lagi formula untuk mencari TC, iaitu, wait, okay. TC is also equals to TFC plus TVC. Ada dua formula. Isn't it? Uh, so, whichever formula yang kita akan guna depends on this question. Maklumat apa yang ada dalam question tersebut. So, same goes here. So, tak perlu kata, uh, I'm so confused by that. Why, why do they have, each of them have two formula? Tak ada pun. Tak ada, tak perlu confused pun. Because it came from this one. AR equals to TR bagi Q. So, if we manipulate this formula, to find TR is basically, this Q is divide, bahagikan. So, kita bawa ke sini, bawa ke this side, it will become AR times Q. So, kita dapat formula ni. As you can see here, the formula is the same. Kali ni, nampak formula dia berbeza kan? TFC plus TVC. AC times Q. Uh, Totally different formula, isn't it? Okay, but this one is the same. Something darab Q. Something darab Q. So, apa kesimpulan dia? Kesimpulan dia adalah nilai P and nilai AR is basically the same. Nilai yang sama sebab hasil dia akan membawa nilai yang sama iaitu TR. Ah, okay, afterwards kita akan reason. Kita akan tengok kenapa nilai P and AR is the same. So, either P or AR is the same value for market structure. Okay. And while, kalau kita nak cari marginal, marginal is the changes of total revenue to the changes of quantity. Same goes here. Huh, the same formula, I already told you, right? To find marginal cost, the same formula as above, kita cuma letak segitiga ni. Yang bermaksud changes, changes in total cost over change divided by changes in quantity. Same goes here. When we want to find marginal product, changes in total product divided by changes in labor. Well, for this one, we don't have second formula for TP. Uh, fortunately. Okay, tak ada formula, second formula for TP. TP ada satu formula je. Okay. So, are you okay with that? For MR, it's basically the same formula. You just put the changes, the segitiga ni, yang mewakili, changes in TR over changes in Q. So, macam mana nak cari changes? Nilai, kalau table, nilai bawah, tolak nilai atas. Kita akan tengok soalan ni nanti. Okay. So, going back to our slide here. So, total revenue is an income received by a producer through selling goods and services in the market. Formula is P times Q. Or, if you manipulate this formula, it's AR times Q. It's the same. Okay. Average revenue is the amount per unit received. Per unit to be that purata. By a producer after selling a product in the market. So, the formula is 
AR equals to TR by divided by Q. Okay, and last kali, marginal revenue is the additional units of income received by a producer after selling one additional pertambahan. Sebab dia panggil changes. Changes in TR over changes in Q. This is the formula. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, basically, I already adjust this. Okay, sorry, look at here. Perfect market and imperfect. We will split the market structure into two categories. Hopefully, you still remember, uh, 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 you still can recall the types of market structure in my first teaching video. We have four types of market structure, which which are the perfect competition, monopolistic competition, or kita call it as monopolistic, monopoly, or monopolist. Ataupun, uh, last kali is oligopoly. Four types of market structure. So, these four types of market structure is being split into two categories, which is perfect market and imperfect market. Okay. So, perfect market means, uh, ada satu je yang duduk bawah kategori perfect market daripada empat market structure tersebut, iaitu perfect competition. The first market structure, which is perfect competition, yang akan duduk bawah kategori perfect market. Sebab apa? Maksud perfect market ni, because it follows the price determined within the market. Harga yang ditentukan dalam market, harga persilangan demand and supply curve tu. Cuma satu je market structure yang follow sebiji precisely the price of the market which are the perfect competition. So, hanya satu buah market structure je yang akan duduk bawah kategori perfect market which is the perfect competition. And aside from that, other market structure which is the monopolistic, monopoly and oligopoly, they belongs to the category of imperfect market in that they don't follow the price determined in the market okay are you okay with that all right so okay i'll change this one okay so here it will give you this table Okay, so dalam ni dia dah bagi tahu dah. Per, pure, perfect competition. Okay, so kalau dia tak bagi tahu number dia, kalau dia bagi table saja, awak boleh detect dia perfect competition macam mana? Look at the price. If the price always the same like this, maksudnya perfect price, price never changes, it follows the market price. That is what it means. Bukan bermaksud jual satu barang harga dia sepuluh ringgit, jual dua barang pun sepuluh ringgit. Maksudnya satu barang harga lima ringgit tak? Itu bukan maksud dia. Maksud dia harga dia tak akan berubah. You jual satu barang pun tetap satu barang tu harga sepuluh ringgit. You jual dua barang pun satu barang tu tetap harga dia sepuluh ringgit. That harga barang pertama sepuluh ringgit, harga barang kedua pun sepuluh ringgit. You jual tiga barang pun tetap setiap barang tu sepuluh ringgit. Maksudnya, there will be no discount at all even though you bought a lot of that product. Ah, tu yang kita boleh identify from the table. So if the table is given to you, dia tak bagi topik ke atas. Perfect competition dia boleh panggil pure competition. Kalau dia kata which market structure, kalau dia bagi table which market structure the firm is operating, look at the price structure. Uh, the value of the price, kotak price P. Kalau nilai dia, consistent macam ni. So, it means perfect competition. Nilai dia tetap fix. Uh, macam kita belajar macam uh, fix input, fix cost tu. Uh, sama. Kat sini, in terms of the price, it's fixed. It never changes. It follows precisely the price in the market. So, this is the perfect competition. Meanwhile, if the price changes like this, look at the price box, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 
bukan kita jual lima barang harga dia enam ringgit untuk kelima lima bar- untuk lima barang tu semua harga keseluruhan enam ringgit tak harga barang dia tu jadi satu barang jadi makin murah lima ringgit lima ringgit lima ringgit lima ringgit ha. so ada diskon lah if you bought you you buy more you can buy uh, at low uh, sorry you buy more the price will become lower ha. so ini bila harga berubah-ubah ni, so market structure apa? Dia ada dua keberan kalian, sama ada monopolistik ataupun monopoli. Okay, dua tu. So, satu lagi market structure kita oligopoli. Macam mana kita nak detect? Harga dia kan rigid. Ha, ingat tak? Characteristic of our last market structure which is our oligopoly in terms of the price oligopoly price rigid price hard to change okay and for this one because it's very different compared to other market structure demand curve dia pun ada dua combination of elastic dengan inelastic demand curve so dia tak ada dalam bentuk table The question won't be asked in the shape of table. In the style of table. Tak ada. Uh, so, no worries. Kalau soalan table ni, dia ada tiga option dia. Sama ada perfect competition, monopoly ataupun monopolistic competition. Uh, so, option you, kalau dia tanya, what types of market structure kalau dia tak bagi, nama dia, you look at the price. If the price differs like this, It's either monopolistic or monopoly. Bukan oligopoly. Oligopoly tak akan ditanya dalam bentuk table. But if the price is consistent like this, it's fixed like this, it is perfect competition. Okay? Hopefully you can understand that. Alright. Now, let's do our calculation. Very simple calculation. See here? How to find total revenue here? I already told you, right? Okay, the formula of total revenue is basically P times Q. So, this is our P, this is our Q, times time 1, 10, times time 2, 20, 30, 40, 50 That's it Next is Find AR Formula AR is Average Equals to TR Divided by Q So this is our TR This is our Q 10 bagi 1 10 Divided by 1 equals to 10. 20 divided by 2 equals to 10. 30 divided by 3 equals to 10. 40 divided by 4 also equals to 10. 50 divided by 5 equals to 10. See here? Okay. Are you okay with that? Right? And next is, we'll find MR. MR is basically the formula changes in TR divided by changes in Q. Okay. So, how to find changes is basically bawah tolak atas. So, ingat eh, our Q doesn't start with zero. So, nilai atas ada, dia tak boleh terus dash. So, nilai atas ni ada. So, kat sini maksudnya kosong. Kosong ke satu. Changes dia satu. Okay. So, masa kita tak produce anything, zero. Okay. So, I'll, I'll erase this one. Okay. What happened to TR kita? No product, meaning that? No revenue. Total revenue is zero. So, what happened to the changes? 
in terms of the changes in TR, 10 tolak kosong, 10. So, formula dia changes in TR over changes in Q. So, 10 bahagi 1 equals to 10. Same goes here. 20 tolak 10. Changes kat sini, also 10. 2 tolak 1, 1. So, 10 bahagi 1 equals to 10. Here, 1, 30 of, uh, minus 20, also 10. 1, 40 of, uh, minus 30, also equals to 10. Here also, 1, 50 minus by 40, it's 10. So, 10 over 1, 10, 10 over 1, 10, 10 over 1. Also equals to 10. So as you can see here, everything is 10. For AR and also for MR. Ah, okay. So in terms of the diagram, okay, we'll draw the diagram here. Okay. Alright, so let's draw the diagram here. So, what should I put here? And so, sekarang ni kita kira apa? Kita kira TR, AR, MR. Kan hari tu, kalau ingat kan, production kan, bila kita kira T, TP, AP, MP, kita draw. Untuk kos pun TC, TFC, T, uh, TVC kita draw. AC, AFC, A, uh, A, AVC dan MC kita draw. Uh, so here, you must draw. The thing is, you don't draw this one. Satu je yang you tak draw, iaitu the TR. Uh, this one je yang you tak draw. So, ini you akan draw, ini you akan draw. Yang ni akan jadi paksi. Price and quantity. Okay? So, sama macam di mana supply, price and quantity akan jadi paksi. Okay. So, price kat sini. Price. Here is quantity. Ha. Okay. So, kita nak draw AR dengan MR. The thing is, AR and MR, the value is the same. 10 je semua. So, what happened to the ni? Bila output equals to 0, Output equals to 1, output equals to 2, 3, 4, 5. Because we are sketching, tak perlu buat ni. Ni semua saya nak tunjukkan awak ni. The value is always 10. Nilai dia akan setiasa sama, 10. So, bila saya sambung garisan tu, dia akan jadi straight line. Oh, sorry my drawing, sebab saya pun... Masalah sikit bab menggunakan pen ni I, I don't really know how to use it yet I'm still practicing So Yang saya ingat tu kita Sekejap eh Let's try to garis dia Supaya dia betul-betul lurus <laughs> Okay Hopefully you boleh nampak lah Alright And then Kita labelkan apa yang kita draw ni Kita draw AR Equals to MR Dan ini juga adalah P Betul tak P? Cuba tengok ni Nilai P is also 10 Betul tak? 10 10 ah. Dan inilah Demand curve Untuk Perfect competition Oh sorry Okay, so yang cantik punya version Ha, macam ni <laughs> Okay Alright, so Because everything is the same P, A, R, M, R Ha So uh, Kan masa I, I teach you The characteristic Kita kata 
The demand curve is perfectly elastic straight. Kenapa? Because dia follow the price of the market kan? Ah look at uh, 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 apa look again kalau you tak boleh nak ingat, tengok balik my first teaching video. Kenapa saya explain kat sini ni? They follow the price of the market. So they has lots of competitors, they cannot manipulate the price. If they change their price, the buyer will go to another buy uh, another seller because they are uh, selling the perfectly the same product. Everybody is selling the perfectly the same product. Uh, so semua orang uh, buyer tahu nak macam mana nak beli produk tersebut. Kalau jual mahal dia orang lain buyer ada banyak option boleh beli daripada seller lain. Uh, sebab tu dia perfectly elastic. Uh, so kalau kita tengok balik maksud perfectly elastic masa kita belajar ED Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Eh, sorry. So kita proceed with uh, topic 4. This is my video. ED. Okay, sihir. Uh, so here, perfectly elastic. Buyer is extremely responsive with the change in price. When there's a slight increase in the price, buyer will not buy any product. Tak boleh naik sikit pun harga. Sebab apa? Extremely sensitive. Sebab dia banyak sangat pengganti. Kalau you tak ikut harga pasaran, you akan hilang customer. Okay? Alright. So, this is what happened. Alright? Okay. So, yang saya nak bagi tahu sekarang ni, kalau you perasan, the value of P and the value of AR is exactly the same. Sebab itulah, in our formula tadi, AR times Q is also equals to P times Q because the value is the same. Ha. Walaupun the formula is times Q, every every single one is times Q, the thing is, we can use either because the value of AR and value of P is the same. So, tips dia lagi, kalau dalam exam, untuk perfect competition, you tak perlu susah kira untuk AR. Kalau dia bagi nilai P, follow je nilai AR ni, macam nilai P. Uh, tips dia lagi, untuk MR pun tak perlu kira. Dia akan follow nilai P juga. Uh, because, dia cuma ada satu curve sahaja. P equals to AR equals to MR equals to demand. Okay? If for example, yang dia bagi P equals to 5. 5 belakang. So, TR of course you kena kira. Tapi untuk AR, semua akan jadi 5. Untuk MR pun, everything will be 5. Kalau kat sini dia bagi 12 belakang Kat sini akan jadi semua 12 Kat sini akan jadi semua 12 Don't waste your time Kira Because you know The outcome will be the same Okay This is for fair competition Very simple Okay Because I already show you the calculation For monopolistic and monopoly I don't show you the calculation Because you already know how to calculate Okay So this is the table Your table I'll give um, uh, Untuk student punya slide Kosong macam ni so, what should you do is, you show the calculation, find TR. So, TR is P times Q, right? 10 darab 1, equals to 10, 10 darab 2, 18, 8 darab 3, 18, 24. Lepas tu, cari AR. AR is basically TR bagi Q. Uh, okay? So, after you have calculated that, you will get the answer like mine. So, this is the answer. As you can see here, look at this column. This one. And also this one. Isn't it the same? Nilai dia? So, kesimpulan yang saya kata, tak kisahlah, it's perfect competition ke, monopolistic ke, monopoly ke, oligopoly walaupun dia tak tunjuk table. The value of P is equals to the value of AR. That's why the formula is like this. You can use either because the value is the same. So, in the exam, kalau dia suruh you calculate the value of AR given the value of P kalau dia, if for example dia tak bagi P tapi dia bagi AR you can find P because AR is basically P are you okay? so you don't need to waste your time calculating AR because AR and P is the same value okay, for TR you don't need to calculate and while for MR okay, so for this one like I told you, you just find the differences. Okay? Find the differences. So, 
here is 0, so it's 10, 0, it's 1. So 10 over 1 dapat 10. So kat sini, 8, kat sini, 1. 8 bagi 1 dapat 8. Ha, sini 24, tolak 18, 6. 6 bagi 1, so dapat 6. Okay, hopefully you nampak kat sini eh. Alright, so this is the value of MR. Ha. Okay, so for monopoly and monopolistic, the value of MR is not the same like the value of AR. Lain, tak sama. Okay, so in terms of drawing, we will we will draw untuk monopoly and monopolistic juga. You can draw a diagram. TR we won't draw. We will draw AR and MR. Okay, so the diagram will be like this. Dia tak kena straight lah sebab value dia berbeza. Dia kenapa dia turun ke bawah macam ni? Look at the figure. Daripada tinggi, daripada besar, nilai yang besar. As time goes by, bila kuantiti bertambah, nilai dia makin berkurang. Ha. Same goes with MR. Daripada nilai yang besar, bila kuantiti dia bertambah, because this is quantity kan, eh? kuantiti move here, the value keep decreasing. Because we are sketching, tak perlu letak kuantiti pun. Macam ni eh? Macam ni je lah, you draw. Macam diagram yang saya tunjuk tadi tu, Ha, yang ni saya cuma nak bagi tahu kat awak kenapa dia macam ni. Okay. Oh, macam tak sedap pula tengok ini. Hodoh sangat pula. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Alright. Ha, so, kenapa nilai dia ada dua macam ni? Sebab the value of AR dan the value of MR is not the same. Tengok ni. Value of AR. Satu je sama kan? Sebab tu dia start dekat sama dekat 10. Dia start. Dia letak. Start kat sini Tapi afterward So lain AR 9 MR 8 AR 8 Ini 6 Nampak tak? Nilai AR lagi besar Daripada nilai MR Abaikan nilai negatif Dia bukan macam Margin of product Yang akan echo dia duduk ke bawah No worries about that Kita tak akan tarik Echo MR ni Sampai ke bawah No worries Okay In your calculation Kalau negatif Letak negatif Kenapa negatif saya kata? Ha. In terms of the Apa? Here, 21 Tolak 24 Nombor kecil, tolak nombor besar Of course, ada negatif You kena kira, kena tulis negatif Tak tulis negatif, salah You must write down the negative Okay Tapi, yang saya nak highlight kat sini Okay Because the value of MR is lower than the value of AR. Nilai AR lagi besar daripada nilai MR. That's why in terms of the diagram, MR akan duduk bawah. Sebab nilai yang lagi rendah. So, kalau letak kat sini, ini 8 kat sini. Ini 9. Masa 2, okay. Kalau saya letak, kalau saya draw sikit. Ha. Okay, kalau kat sini 2 kan. Masa kuantiti 2. Cuba tengok kat sini. Masa kuantiti 2 kan. Kuantiti 2. AR lap, uh, 9 MR 8 ha, So jadinya MR 8 Ini 9 Kan daripada kosong Kesian dia lagi tinggi kan ha, Nampak tak? Sebab tu MR kena duduk bawah Hopefully you nampak eh Okay So I'll erase this Start nak Nak tunjuk kat awak je Okay And then this is the diagram for monopoly and monopolistic. Uh, so, sebab tu, MR di bawah, lepas tu kat sini, apa awak nak label? Sebab P dengan AR kan sama kan? Ha, nilai P dengan nilai AR sama. Dan di mana ada P, di mana ada AR, itu adalah demand curve. Ha, demand curve awak. Ha, sebab tu dalam karakteristik tu, Ha. Dia ni kan? Dia macam ni kan? Ha. Okay. And yang saya nak tunjuk kat awak tu, dia beza dia antara dua uh, apa market structure monopoly and monopoly state ni. Ha, ni beza ni. 
bos macam ni rupa dia. Cuma nya yang monopolistik, monopolistik ni kan dia ke 4 ke 9 buah firm. Monopoli only one firm. So dia tak ada substitute ni. Dia hasilkan produk yang unik. Jadinya demand curve dia inelastic. Sebab buyer tak ada choice. Sebab tu dia lagi cut orang kata lagi tegak dia punya demand curve dia. Sebab perubahan harga yang banyak customer cuma hilang sedikit. Well, yang ni sebab dia ada pilihan ni. 4 ke 9 buah firm yang menghasilkan produk yang sama walaupun ada attribute yang berbeza. Sebab tu demand curve dia lebih elastik. Sebab itulah dia lebih orang kata almost flat. Ha, ini steep kita bagi. Ini flat. Dia ada jadi horizontal line. Ha, sebab perubahan harga yang sedikit akan menyebabkan hilang kuantiti di bayar banyak. Okay. So kalau I put error kan. Harga naik sikit dia. Kuantiti di mana akan turun dengan banyak. Well for this one. Harga naik dengan large. Kuantiti di mana akan turun dengan small. Okay. Nak mengadjust mana satu hal pula. So, okay lah. Tak apalah. As long as you faham. Eh. Okay. So, product has no substitute for the monopoly. Buyer is less sensitive and responsive to the change in price. Dia kurang responsif sebab tak ada pilihan kan. Monopoly ingat karakteristik kata dia hasilkan produk yang unik. Dia ada copyright patents, special privilege. Produk dia tak boleh tiru. Kalau orang customer nak beli, tu je satu-satunya ada dalam pasaran. Tak, tak nak, kena bought from that seller. While produk yang ni uh, need no substitute. Yang ni ada few substitute untuk monopolistic. Sebab dia 4 to 9 firms kan. Okay. Buyer is more sensitive lah. Uh, so kalau macam saya kata produk cotton, kain cotton. Kalau cotton for pocket drop mahal sangat. Tak mustahil. Customer akan beralih arah dan tukar pakai cotton butterfly ke and so on. Okay. Uh, well for this one I already explained it to you. Perfectly elastic the basic product has lots of substitute but it is extremely sensitive to its change in price. The product cannot change price. Okay. And I already do this here. I forgot here. Uh, same explanation here. For the policy competition in terms of demand curve. If price increase in smaller amount, the quantity demanded decrease in larger amount. Okay. Well, this one price increase in larger amount result to a smaller decrease in quantity demanded. Okay, less sensitive. This is very sensitive. This is extremely sensitive. And it also tak suka harga naik. Okay, alright. So this is base antara dia. Yang ni dua dua down sloping. Uh, downward sloping lah. Eh. Kita panggil macam demand curve downward sloping. Cuma ya kecondongan dia tu yang membezakan monopoli lebih tegak. Yang ni lebih flat. Okay. Alright. So kita nak tengok macam mana kita nak analyse profit untuk setiap market structure. So market structure profit dia ada dua time frame. Short run and long run. Okay. Uh, I told you I use the short form perfect competition, monopolistic competition, monopoly and oligopoly. Okay, for short run, all four market structure they will have three types of profit, which are the super normal profit, normal profit and sub normal profit. Okay, kejap lagi kita akan belajar. Maksud super normal profit is positive profit, hasil lebih besar daripada cost. So kita dapat untung lah positive profit. Well, normal profit ni, hasil kita sama dengan kos kita. Hasil buat jual barang lah RM50, kos buat barang pun RM50. Break even, balik modal sahaja. Uh, well, sub normal profit, loss, rugi. Our revenue, 
is less than our cost. Kita jual barang RM50. Dapat hasil dia. Tapi kos kita adalah RM70. Kita rugi. So this is sub normal profit. Okay. So setiap market structure in the short run, they will experience three types of profit. Okay. I'll show you how to uh, see the, the types of profit among the four market structure. While in the low run, okay, ini kita be extra careful. Nanti kita akan buat teaching video yang lain lah lagi. Okay. Perfect competition and monopolistic competition will only have normal profit only in the long run. Why? Sebab characteristic dia of free, free untuk perfect competition, easy is for monopolistic competition. Entry and exit. Characteristic. About that. Free entry. Perfect competition. Easy entry exit. Untuk uh, monopolistic competition. So maksudnya, can easily join the monopolistic market structure. Low capital needed can easily join join the perfect competition. Sebab dia tak ada copyright and pattern. Yang ni tak perlu uh, copyright and pattern pun tak ada. Moderate amount of capital needed. You wants to join and sell the same product? No worries. You can. Uh, so what happens if they have they have their, this characteristic? So they will have lots of competitors in the long run. Bila orang tengok, you jual produk tersebut, you dapat untung. Many more would like to sell the same product like yours. Peniaga kat biasa lah, dia tengok online, peniaga benda tu dapat untung, dia pun nak jual juga. Okay, so in the long run, they cannot sustain their profit. Profit tu kita punya super normal profit lah. Okay, and they will only get break even and atau nama lain dia adalah normal profit je yang orang akan dapat in the long run. That one is for perfect competition and monopolistic competition. Sebab karakteristik dia yang mudah orang lain nak join market structure dia orang tu. While for monopoly and oligopoly, Okay, they will only have super normal profit. Maksudnya dia akan untung sahaja in the long run. Tak akan rugi pun. Masa short run, dia akan ada tiga jenis profit kan. Untuk monopoli kan, oleh kau boleh. Tapi in the long run, they will only have super normal profit. Dia akan untung sahaja. Itu kelebihan monopoli and oleh kau boleh. Why? Because characteristic of no. No entry is for monopoli. Barrier to enter is for oligopoly. Tengok balik karakteristik kalau you tak ingat. No entry monopoly. Because produk dia ada copyright pattern special privilege. So if others want to enter their industry and produce the same product like monopoly did, cannot because produk dia ada copyright. You cannot follow, you cannot copy, you cannot tiru. Salah dari segi undang-undang. Sebab dia buat hak cipta terpelihara for their product. For oligopoly, yes, you can copy their product Tapi it's, they have a large barrier to entry Why? Sebab this company is very big company You must have lots of amount of capital to start up the business And they will have a very fierce competition Tak buat syarikat petroleum bukan senang Because of that These two market structure They can sustain their super normal profit in the long run because they have no rivals okay and that's why this is the specialties of monopoly and oligopoly okay so kalau bentuk soalan what types of question they will ask okay so kalau ini adalah untuk soalan eco 162 eh nanti saya tunjuk soalan untuk eco uh, 120 7 ah. So even though Ada banyak benda Banyak curve lagi yang you tak kenal Tapi you dah boleh guess What types of market structure is this Even though dia tak bersambung Dua AR duduk atas MR duduk bawah So market structure apa Dia tak sekali kan ah. So it's either 
monopoli ataupun monopolistik. Right. Ha, yang ada asyik macam tu is either monopoli ataupun monopolistik. Sebab kalau perfect competition, MR dengan AR ni sekali. While kalau oligopoli pula, bentuk dia bentuk dia macam ni. King ke? Ada point king tu. Point yang patah. So macam mana rupa oligopoli? I'll show you. Don't worry. Here's my question there. Ali. Macam mana rupa oligopoli? Ah ni. Pak tak? Turun, patah, turun. So this is oligopoli. Nampak tak? Dalam soalan ni tak bagi tahu pun. Of a firm. So dia tanya, what market structure is the firm operating? So if you cannot detect, then it will be hard for you for to uh, to answer the question. So it's very important for you to know which market structure is this uh, from the curve. You can you can know the market structure from the curve. Okay, alright. Ah, uh, so yeah, ni ha, tengok dia tak label pun. Dia suruh awak label kan? Label A, B, C. You have two. Yang turun ke bawah. Ini eh, betul lah saya tak ajar lagi. So okay. Tapi what is C? What is B? Mana satu yang duduk dalam? Mana satu yang duduk luar? C is MR. B is AR. AR is also equals to P. Also equals to demand. What is this? This is oligopoly. Turun, patah. It's not a straight one. Kalau kalau monopoli ataupun monopolistik dia straight. Ah kalau dia macam ni macam ni video kalau dia tak bagi tahu monopolistik apa benda ni. Daripada kecerunan dia tu kan elasticity tu nak tahu dia monopoli ke monopolistik. Basically it's impossible to know that. You kena kira elasticity dulu. Dia ada combination dengan soal uh, chapter elasticity. Kalau dia dapat less than 1 in elastic, dia tahu itu adalah monopoli. Kalau you kira elasticity more than one, itu adalah monopolistik. Ah, macam itulah cara dia nak kira. Kalau tak, you boleh jawab either, either one. Okay. What about this one? Ah, Nampak tak? Dia tak ada curve yang turun ke bawah kan? Tapi dia straight line. Lepas tu dia kata MR equals to AR. Mana je yang curve yang MR equals to AR? Satu je yang curve equals to MR, MR equals to AR which is perfect. Competition Okay So look at the question Question tanya apa ha, The diagram below shows the profit maximizing firm Jangan lupa baca soalan Kena-kena tu maklumat dia di sini In which market structure is the firm operating So nak jawab apa Perfect competition ha, Yang tulis PC macam tu eh Make sure you write down in full name eh Perfect competition Macam mana you tahu ini adalah perfect competition because MR is equal to AR. Yes, if you answer that, it's correct. Because for market structure yang lain, memang AR tak, tak equal to MR. MR di bawah, AR di atas. Same goes here. Untuk oligopoli pun sama macam tu juga. Okay. Betul. Satu lagi boleh buat apa? Alasan dia. Because the value of MR is constant. It's tend. Right. Kalau market structure yang lain Macam ni Dia turun ke bawah ni Maksudnya nilai dia tak akan sama Nilai dia akan berubah-ubah Masa kuantiti ni nilai dia lain Masa kuantiti ni nilai dia lain Masa kuantiti ni nilai dia lain Haa So kalau dia tak nak pakai MR is constant Dia boleh kata Because AR is constant Tapi You cannot answer Because price is constant Why? Because in the question Tak ada price Even though you know this MR equals to AR equals to price You tak boleh kata price Sebab dalam soalan tu dia tak tulis price So you tak boleh jawab something yang tak ada dalam soalan And you tak boleh cakap 
kata because demand is perfectly elastic tak boleh juga because tak ada dia tulis dalam ni walaupun dia tahu this is demand curve also so ingat pesan saya tu ok so enough lah uh, in this teaching video I would like you to know how to calculate the TR AR, MR and to identify the market structure uh, so now you can do the question yang ada table uh, so bila dia bagi macam ni can you find TR here ok so which question yang you boleh buat uh, ok you can do question 2 ok market price is price this is cost so it's enough lah you ada price you ada quantity so bila output is quantity ok ada price ada quantity you can find TR bila boleh cari TR of course you boleh cari AR dan juga MR. So, for question 2, you can answer 1. Okay, that's it. Yang lain tu, I, I haven't teach you. Okay. And for this one, calculate the TR. Okay, you can also calculate this one. Uh, cans of pineapple produce, this is quantity. This is total cost. Number of can demanded. Sama je dengan can produce. This is quantity also. This is price. So, price times quantity dapat TR. Okay. Lepas tu, dia suruh calculate MR. Dan juga MC. You, know that? you still need to use the scale for chapter 5. Eh, chapter 5. Eh. Chapter 6. Chapter cost lah. Cost and production. Find MC. Sebab dia ada TC kat sini. Changes in TC over changes in Q. So, do your calculation. Mana-mana yang boleh dululah. Untuk chapter yang ada, uh, untuk question yang ada table. Okay. Uh, same goes here. Question 5. Please try. Uh, question 7. Question with table. Question 13. Question 14. Question 16. 18 20 Okay 20, uh, 32 And 33 35 Okay oh, So that one is equal 162 Well for equal 120 You may try question Yes, this question, question 2, also question 2. Question 7. Question 10. Okay, so the HM, ni. please try this one. Uh, that's it. Uh, yours is not that much because yours kita tak cover banyak sangat. Okay, uh, you may try to calculate this one. Fill in the table. Right.